Hi guys, and as you can see, this is a completed Predator, and uh, you may be scratching your head thinking, well, what part of this is a tutorial? <laughs> but I wanted to do a quick intro, uh, just going over what I want to achieve in this tutorial series. Well, I had about 10 hours worth of footage, but the tank probably took me about 15 hours in total to do, and uh, that seems like a crazy amount of time. But what I'd hopefully be able to uh, convey in this tutorial, which is going to run for about an hour over a, a series of parts, is how I actually um, do each technique and uh, the bits that I've edited and cut out should be able to uh, fill in the blanks and, and achieve a very similar look. Uh, most of the things that you'll see in this tutorial guys are very uh, easy to replicate. It's just that some of them might be a bit time consuming. Okay guys, go grab yourself a nice hot drink and we'll get started. Okay guys, so first of all, we need to actually make sure that the model's ready to be painted. And that starts by actually cleaning the Forge World resin tank and getting rid of all that horrible mold release, as you can see illustrated on this resin chunk here. There's no way paint's gonna to adhere to that without removing it. So I clean the actual model in a detergent. And then after I've done that, I seal the whole model in with satin varnish to make sure that the primer is going to adhere to it perfectly. As you can see, there's no paint on this model, but it's got a perfectly dry and smooth finish. I'm going to be priming the tank with Vallejo's Polyurethane Primer Grey. These are great primers. What I like to do is actually spray, spray relatively closely and uh, in small, tiny amounts. It is a slow process and I've got to be honest guys, it doesn't have to be half this slow. You could actually spray from further away in a much wider cone of spray. But ultimately, um, I want the most possible control uh, I can on how thick the primer colour is going down. Again, that's just me being a little bit finicky. But uh, the choice is yours whether you want to actually lay down the primer coat really slow and uh, evenly or a nice sweeping uh, motion it's uh, preference really but this is just how I personally prime we are up to a fun part now guys where we're just going to be putting down random patches of paint ready for the chipping stage so I'll start off using dirty black by the life colour now that's a regular acrylic paint so it does need to be thinned so here I'm adding life colours acrylic thinner this enables me to actually use the paint directly into the airbrush and it's going to spray out nice and smoothly. Okay guys, this is a real fun part. Now, this is so simple because if you actually make a mess, that's a good thing. What we're trying to avoid here is uh, an even coverage with the areas that we want to actually show through the chips. The more variety you've got in the actual density of paint, and the opacity um, of the colours, the actual better the tank's going to look for it in the end when those chips start to uh, come through. So most of the things that you've seen I'm doing here is pretty much random, but I am actually taking into uh, consideration where I think that some of the uh, chips would occur, like on extreme edges and that sort of thing. But as you can see on the front part of the tank there, some of those uh, blodges uh, you'd be mortified if you actually did that on a, on a tank when you was trying to get a, a nice smooth finish but that's definitely what we want to achieve here random uneven patches of color is what we're aiming for guys okay guys so we're going to start adding some rust patches now using Vallejo model air burnt umber as you can see on the actual predator tank here I've left areas completely clear of that dirty black colour ready for me to actually put down some of the uh, rust colour and just like before make sure that uh, you're really uh, random with how thick you put the paint down so some areas are going to be much lighter than others. I'm being a little bit more careful with the actual burnt umber colour I'm, I'm strategically picking out where I want those rusty chips to come through so You'll see like on the extreme edges of like the hatches there that I went all around the edges with a rust colour and I'll probably do the same with the turret ring. The most important thing here guys is to have absolute fun. You cannot go wrong. If you put down a little bit too much rust, don't worry about it.
by increasing or decreasing the amount of paint that's actually coming out of the airbrush, I'm able to create different tonal values by using just one colour. Which goes back to what I said a moment ago, by actually having an uneven look to the actual colour, it's going to lead to a much more believable overall end result. And using the airbrush, as you can see on camera guys, it's so simple to do. getting very close now guys using much more controlled bursts of paint coming out of the airbrush to get some tight lines where I think that the rust is going to be concentrated on um, cracks and crevices and on the extreme sharp edges of the panels So after finishing all the paint chips, it's time to actually seal it all in. And this is not a necessary stage guys to be honest, but it's an extra precaution just to make sure that when I actually start chipping the model, that I'm not going to be pulling up the colour underneath. I have let the satin varnish thoroughly uh, dry, now it's time to start putting down the chipping fluid. As you can see it's AK Interactive Heavy Chipping Fluid. The most important thing here guys is to be very generous with the chipping fluid. Put down a nice thick coat don't worry it's not going to obscure any of the detail also you can actually come back in with a second layer as well after the first layer is drying the most important thing is guys don't be sparing with it if you don't put enough of the chipping solution down you won't be able to actually get the effect that we were aiming for so as you can see here as I angle the tank towards the light you can actually see how wet the tanks becoming I've left the chipping solution to thoroughly dry as you can see on the turret. It's got like a high satin finish to it. Now I'm actually spraying down Vallejo Model Air White paint and this is going to be the colour that I'm actually going to be starting to uh, work with the chips. I'm placing down the paint nice and thin. I don't want a thick coat of paint here guys. Two reasons. One, I don't want to obscure all that lovely detail on the model and secondly if you put down the paint too thick it's going to make the task of chipping the paint off much more difficult so a nice even thin coat of paint is what we're looking for This is another real fun part guys, we're actually going to start chipping away at the tank. Now what I've found to actually be much more effective is not to actually saturate the tank with water. So don't wet a whole huge panel with water, because what I've found is by doing that, by the time you've actually worked on one corner of the tank and you get to the second, the paint's been soaking in water for so long that you'll actually be pulling up huge chunks of paint which will look like paint being stripped off a wall with a, a paint stripper which is not the effect that looks real really we want tiny uh, chips so I found the best way personally is to actually have a bit of water on the actual uh, on a worn out old toothbrush and to actually attack the, the tank that way and if it doesn't work add a little bit more water so I take it in baby steps uh, as opposed to actually just washing a whole panel and then trying to uh, attack it. I've also found that by using a toothbrush with really splayed and uh, beating up bristles if you like, it gives a really nice effect uh, to the chips. But I do also actually alternate between uh, stiff dry brushes like the uh, GW tank brushes are a very good brush to use. And also toothpicks as well. But again, with pretty much what I'll say throughout the whole of these uh, tutorial series, guys, take your time. Um, 
you know you can actually really rush this stage and actually end up uh, with you know huge gaping uh, chips that just don't look uh, realistic and to scale so this is another cool thing guys um, whereas the actual toothbrush was creating chips using a toothpick it can actually create really nice realistic looking scratches and this is the overall look after it maybe an hour's two worth of chipping it's very important guys that we seal in the tank after all the chipping's been achieved in satin varnish if we don't actually seal the tank in that layer of paint that's on top of the chipping uh, solution which is quite volatile it's actually going to lead to all sorts of uh, troubles as we add uh, different painting uh, effects after the same varnish had thoroughly dried i actually masked off an area using tamiya masking tape which guys i really recommend you getting a good masking tape you don't want to buy cheap hardware masking tape and uh, run the risk of pulling up your, uh, your previous paint layers so after the actual satin varnish had uh, dried I went in with some more of the AK interactive chipping fluid inside the masking areas and then I'm using Vallejo Model Air Russian Green to actually create that Death Guard pinstripe and as I pull back the masking tape guys you'll see I'll have a nice tight pinstripe that would be pretty much impossible to do without using that uh, masking tape there right we're actually going to be chipping away at the pinstripe now guys if I didn't actually put down the chipping solution I would have been left with a solid block of green colour which would have really spoiled the look of the tank so it's uh, important that everything that you do actually matches the next thing so if the whole tank's uh, beaten up and weathered so does the pinstripe need to be you can't actually see on camera guys but the actual brush is moistened with water that brush is not dry if it was dry it wouldn't really be picking up the paint too well so it's a case of moistening the brush seeing how the paint chips away and just adding more if need be guys anyone that's been following my channel over the last few years will know how much i love decals so when forge world brought out the death guard decal sheet i was over the moon the most thing, important thing with decals guys is to actually try when you're actually cutting them to be as close as you can I've uh, got some real dodgy footage here guys where I've actually shown you while I'm cutting I'm, I'm afraid but basically you want to try and as you can see from those decals that were cut out get as close as you can to the carrier film as possible you don't want to cut the decal out in a big square block because that's going to make it much more difficult to conform to the surface that you want to get it on so as you can actually see now on camera guys I'm getting as close as I can to the actual design with a real uh, sharp scalpel blade I think it's very important as well guys to get the best look you can out of your decals it's much you use setting solutions here I'm actually using microset from Microscale Industries I actually saturate the back of the tank with that microset and actually dip the decal uh, to loosen it from the backing paper in very lukewarm water just to make it a little bit more softer because I've actually made sure that the actual back of the tank there is quite saturated with that micro set I'm able to push the decal around a little bit on the back of the tank just to get it uh, in the exact position I want it in Most important 
thing now guys as well is to make sure that any of that micro set is not sitting underneath that decal because it can form bubbles and a thing called silver where some of the decal actually doesn't really go completely flat to the model and it will leave like a shiny uh, effect which we definitely don't want so I'm using a really soft flat brush here guys to pull out any excess fluid and make sure that decal is as flat as I possibly can to give it that sort of hand painted look. It's important that once the decal is dried that we seal it in with satin varnish to protect it and also to actually eliminate the difference in contrast between the sheen of the decal and the actual overall finish of the tank. That wraps up part one guys, stay tuned for part two where we're going to start to bring the tank to life. So please don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe and I'll catch you in part